Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will see how re-ranking and cross-encoding work, how you can call Cohere's powerful re-ranker through Amazon Bedrock, and finally, how you can integrate re-rankers in Langchain to enhance your RAG workflow. Let's get right into it. So Cohere just launched their latest re-ranking model, ReRank 3.5, a few months ago. Like most re-rankers, it is based on cross-encoding. This method allows for deeper understanding of text beyond what classic embeddings are capable of. It's commonly used in the industry as a refining step after an initial retrieval using normal embeddings. As you can see in this little chart, the user query and the set of documents are first separately embedded into vectors. The first retrieval stage uses similarity between vectors to retrieve the most relevant documents. And finally, the re-ranker is used to jointly embed the query and each document to output a relevant score. This new score is then used to rank the retrieved documents, which is why it's called re-ranking. Now it might seem like we just did the same thing twice, but the difference here lies in whether we are separately embedding or jointly embedding. In other words, whether we are using by encoders or cross encoders. Let's quickly check out this great article by Sujata Mudadla to understand the difference between them. So a by encoder, as the name suggests, encodes the query and document separately, producing two different embeddings, one for the document and one for the query. These encoders are trained to obtain vectors whose similarity, in terms of some distance metric, reflects the actual semantic similarity between the query and document. Cross encoders, on the other hand, encode the query and the document together, producing a joint representation, which captures interactions and semantic relationships between the two. These encoders are trained to produce a single score, which reflects the relationship between the query and the document. To put it simply, by encoders, which are the usual embeddings used for retrieval, will produce a general embedding of the document, then a general embedding of the query, and leave it for us to check how similar they are to each other. Cross encoders will produce a context-specific embedding capturing the interrelationship in our query document pair and use it to output a similarity score. Now you might ask, why don't we just use cross encoders for retrieval? And the reason for that is cost and latency. By encoders are much lighter and faster, which makes them ideal for large-scale datasets. Generally, the datasets are already embedded into vectors which are stored in vector stores. During inference, we only need to embed the query, then check its similarity with our document vectors. On the other hand, cross encoders are more computationally intensive and slower, and they need to process the documents together with the user query, which is why they're only used for small datasets. Given the respective advantages of each method, most RAG settings in the industry try to leverage both of them to maximize accuracy. Indeed, by encoders are used to reduce the size of the initial dataset to a small number of candidates, which can be a few hundreds or thousands, then a cross encoder, called a re-ranker, is used to retrieve the most relevant passages from this pool of candidates. So, moving back to our re-rank 3.5 model, Cohere has published some charts showing how much it outperforms other types of retrieval modes. We can see it does better than dense embeddings, which is the vanilla retriever, as well as BM25, which is based on keyword matching and word frequency, or even hybrid search, which combines the two. Here it's evaluated specifically for reasoning use cases, which require search based on both implicit and explicit criteria. And you can see it also outperforms other modes of retrieval in multilingual settings. So recently, AWS announced that they now support Cohere's ReRank 3.5 model through Amazon Bedrock. They also shared some charts benchmarking the ReRanker's performance compared to other retrieval modes in different sectors and use cases. And finally, they provided the list of regions in which the model is currently available, namely, Oregon, Canada Central, Frankfurt, and Tokyo. Let's get started with the coding part of this tutorial. As always, we will start with some preparations. We first need to get our Bedrock credentials, which, as you can see, are stored in our secret YAML file. You can check out our previous video on Amazon Bedrock, in which we describe in detail how to set up a user with the right permissions, and how to get these credentials. Next, we need to make sure we have access to the model on Amazon Bedrock. So we open the console, go to the Bedrock service, make sure we're in one of the four supported regions for Cohere ReRank, and scroll down to Model Access. Here we can look for the provider which is Cohere, 
Then look for the specific model, which is re-rank 3.5. You can see we don't have access yet. So we click here and click on request model access. We make sure our model is selected, click on next and finally click on submit. Let's now confirm that we have access to the model. As you can see, it's immediate in this case, but it could sometimes take a few minutes. Going back to our code, the second preparation step is the sample data. Here we simply take a few sentences to illustrate, as our main focus in this video is how to call the re-ranker from Bedrock and integrate it into your Langshane Retriever. A future video will be dedicated to the performance benchmarking of this re-ranker using a real evaluation dataset. Let's now see how to call the Cohere 3.5 re-ranker directly from the Bedrock client. There are two main methods to do this. We can call it using the Cohere Python library or directly using the Amazon Boto 3 library. Let's check out the first method. So we start by installing the Cohere package, then we import it. Next, we initialize our client using the Bedrock Cohere v2 class from the Cohere package. We give it a region, our access key, and our secret key. Make sure the region is one of the four regions we mentioned earlier, and that the access is granted for the model in that region. Next, we call the re-rank method using our client. We give it our query, the documents to be ranked, the name of the re-ranker model, and the top P which we set to 5, meaning we only want to keep the 5 top ranked documents. The response we get will have a results component, and it looks like this. As you can see, it indeed yields 5 results as specified by our top P parameter. Each of these results is accompanied by a relevance score, which is the output score we mentioned earlier, when we talked about cross encoders. We also get the original indexes of the documents before ranking. We will use these indexes to find the actual documents selected by the re-ranker. And there you go. Naturally, the most relevant document appears on top. And you can see that the second document also mentions COP15. Let's now check out the second method which doesn't require the Cohere package. We start by importing the Boto3 and JSON packages. Next, we create our native Boto3 Bedrock client again specifying the region as well as our AWS credentials. We use the invoke model method of our Boto3 client, in which we specify the model name and a request body. Again, the body request contains the query, the documents to be ranked, and our top P, which we set to 5. We also need to set the API version parameter to 2. Here getting the actual response is a little tricky. We need to get the body attribute, read it, decode it, and finally load it with JSON. We get a decoded response which contains the results, and this is how they look. Just like before, we get the relevant scores and the original indexes of the documents, which we use to get the actual ranked sentences. And as you can see, we get the same results as the first method. Let's now see how we can seamlessly integrate this Bedrock re-ranker inside our Langchain RAG framework. We will start by building a vanilla retriever, which corresponds to the by encoder method we saw earlier, then we will enhance it with our new Bedrock re-ranker, which corresponds to the cross-encoder method. To build our vanilla retriever, we first need an embedding model, which we deploy locally using LM Studio. As usual, we install the necessary packages and use a Langchain OpenAI object with our local URL and the name of our deployed model. If this is your first time seeing this, you can check out our tutorial on local embeddings with LM Studio. Next, we need a vector store which we create using the quadrant package. As usual, we set the vector dimensions and distance metric according to our model and use the dense retrieval mode. Finally, using our local embedding model, we populate the quadrant vector store with our list of documents after vectorizing them. Next, we turn our vector store into a retriever using the as retriever method and specify our top K which we set to five. And finally, we test our retriever using the invoke method on a sample query. As you can see, we already get the best results with our vanilla retriever, since our sample dataset is a very easy one. Let's now enhance this retriever using our new Bedrock re-ranker. First, we turn our re-ranker into a Langchain LCEL runnable. To do this, we create a simple function which takes an input dictionary containing the query and the documents and returns the list of re-ranked documents. This function uses our cohere client from the first method and sets the top P to three. Finally, we simply use the runnable Lambda class to turn this function into an LCEL runnable. 
Let's now branch this runnable with our vanilla retriever to create our full enhanced retriever chain. If you're not familiar with how Langchain LCEL works, you can quickly catch up with our dedicated tutorial on the subject. So the input of our full chain will simply be the user query. We use a runnable pass-through to keep the query exactly as it is and pass it to the next step. The vanilla retriever, on the other hand, will turn the query into a list of retrieved documents. We use both the runnable pass-through and the retriever to build this new input dictionary, which we feed into our re-ranker runnable using the pipe method. And finally, our re-ranker runnable will take in this dictionary, containing both the query and the retrieved documents, and yield the list of re-ranked documents. We can call the whole chain simply using the invoke method on our query, and as you can see, we get the final list of our top three most relevant documents. Now we have an enhanced retriever runnable, which leverages both the advantages of the buy encoder, which is our vanilla retriever, and the cross encoder, which is our re-ranker model. Using the speed of the buy encoder, it quickly reduces the original set of documents to a select few retrieved candidates. Then, using the power of the re-ranker, it further reduces this subset while rearranging its order to better reflect its relevance with respect to the user query. And that's it for today's video. We've seen the difference between buy encoders and cross encoders, implemented two different methods to call Cohere's latest re-ranker model, and saw how it could be integrated into our Langshane RAG framework. In the next video, we will introduce the most common evaluation metrics for retrievers and use them along with a real dataset to measure the actual performance gain obtained by adding a re-ranker to our vanilla retriever. If you appreciate the content, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.